So we've learned how to find the error under a normal curve, but all these problems were with devoid of context. There was no um, reasoning behind what we were doing. So our next problem is going to be having some context and some reasoning. So the combined verbal and quantitative reasoning scores on the GRE is normally distributed with a mean of 1066 and a standard deviation of 191. The GREs are sort of like um, the SATs, matter of fact, they're run by the same company, but they're for students that want to go on to graduate school. So you finish your bachelor's, you take a GRE test, and you can go on to get a graduate degree. It's called the graduate records exam. So it has a normal distribution because they design it to be that way. We are going to find the answers to all sorts of questions, um, but for each question, we're going to include an appropriately shaded and, la shaded and labeled picture and calculator entry. There's your favorite part, that shading and labeling. Mm -mm -mm. It means you're going to have to be careful and think about where you're placing your vertical lines. Okay, let's start off at the beginning. What proportion of the scores uh, are between 800 and 1200? Well, in order to appropriately shade and label our graph, we're going to have to realize that we have a mean of 1066 right there and a standard deviation of 191. Oh, and of course, there's the magical, it's normally distributed, which of course, we couldn't do this problem if it wasn't, so that would be a problem. Okay, so 800 is on the left of 1066 and 1200 is on the right. Um, 800 is eh, a little bit more than one standard deviation away. Uh, 1200 is less than a full standard deviation away. So you're going to have the 800 be farther over to the left than the 1200 is over to the right. So it should look like this. This is the graph. Now you can see I've already done this problem, but that's all right, we'll do it again. So let me show you why it works this way. So if I go to the decision matrix, I know the scores, the X values, right? In matter of fact, I know one X value is 800 and I know the other X value is 1200 and I'm looking for a proportion. It says the word proportion right in the problem. And if you look at the top row, it says last word in there, proportion. So I know I'm doing normal CDF. Well, normal CDF is from left to right. So I'm going to go second distribution, normal CDF, the left-hand bound is 800, the right-hand bound is 1200, the mean was 1066, and the standard deviation was 191. I'm going to paste that in there and press enter to get it to run it. And when you round that, that's 6767 rounded, and that's where I got 0.6767. Since they wanted a proportion, that sort of implies a percentage. So I rewrote it as a percent instead of 0 0.67, 0 0.67, or 0 0.6767, I wrote 67.67%. Just because the word proportion is more a um, percentage word. All right, now Columbia University, which is located in downtown New York City, um, only accepts the very, very best of students because it's an Ivy League school. So they will not even look at you or consider your application unless you have a 1350 or higher for their doctoral program. So what proportion of GRE test takers will score high enough to enter into Columbia? Well, obviously that's on the high side, right? So we are going to I'm going to make that go away so you don't have to see it. So it's on the high side. They're only going to look at you if you're in the top group. And you can see that I think it's 0 0.06852, but I'm going to prove it to you. All right, here's how. If I grab the calculator and I go to distribution normal, right? and remember, if you look at the decision matrix, we know the score, we're looking for the proportion or probability, um, what proportion. So normal CDF left comma right, but my right bound doesn't exist, it goes forever. So remember note number three, you were going to use 1E99 to stand for infinity essentially. So we want to say positive infinity, but we can't. So we say 1350 is my lower edge, that's my left hand edge of what I've shaded. And then 1E99, that E is above your comma button. It's, it's a blue one, blue, and it looks like a double E. There are two E's there. That's the exponentiation button. Then you hit 99. Then 1066 and 191 are the same. And you press enter, and you get 0 0.0685. See, I would not lie to you. Which means Columbia is only interested in you if you score in the top 6.85% of G, all GRE test takers which is really steep. They, like most Ivy League schools, demand a lot of uh, performance from their students. All right, so suppose you're a person that takes the GRE and you score at an 1100. What's your percentile rank? Mm, all right, now what does that mean? 
it's been a while since we've seen percentile like that. Percentile, of course, is the percentage that's below you or equal to your score, sorry. Percentage below you or equal to your value. We learned that in section 3.4. All right, now if you score 1100, you're higher than the mean, but not by much, you're just a tiny bit above the mean. So you should put your vertical line just a little bit to the right of the center. And you can tell that I think that this area is 0 0.5706, but I'm gonna prove it to you. So we want the area to the left. So that's normal CDF, just like all the other ones. But remember note number three, it said in the decision matrix, if we don't have a left-hand bound, then we use negative one E99 to stand for that negative infinity. So type negative, which is this button down here at the bottom, one, second, double E. That double E will only type a single E, but it stands for uh, times 10 to the, it's scientific notation. And by the way, if you're wondering, why do they do double E there? It's because if you look above your sign button, there's that green letter E, that's an alphabet E, like the E in elephant, and they don't want you to get confused about the two. So that's why they put a double E on the comma one but it only types as an E, but it's a little bit lowercase. It's not, it's a capital E, but a little bit shrunken down. That's the times 10 to the one. All right, now my upper bound is where I stop, where my gray area, shaded area stops. And yes, you do have to shade these areas. Everything that I'm drawing on this picture over here, you draw and label and shade. So I would have to put in 1100 because that's where my right hand edge of my shaded area. 1066 and 191 haven't changed, so I'm gonna paste them in, I'm gonna press enter, and I get that value that I said it was 0. 0.5706. But if you look at the bottom of the page, what it says is that for percentile ranks, we don't really have a 57.06 th percentile, so we actually are going to round to the nearest number. So that would mean I would round to the 57th percentile, which means 57% of GRE test takers scored 1100 or less. In other words, 43% uh, scored higher than a student that scores 1100, and 57% are either at that 1100 score or less. But your actual answer is right here. It's the P.57 part right there. That's your actual answer. And there we have it. Now let me go back to the decision matrix real quick and just get you to notice. If you look at the top um, green box right here. It says area, percent, probability, percentile, rank, and proportion. When you look back at the problem, you can see it asks, what is the percentile rank? What is the proportion? What proportion? See those words right there? Those are your question words. They're queuing into you which portion of the decision matrix you're going to use. So by saying what proportion, what proportion, and then before it had capital P parentheses, which means what probability, what probability. So when it's asking for probabilities, when it's asking for proportions, when it's asking for percentile rank, you're in the top row of that decision matrix, which means you're gonna use normal CDF, left comma right. Um, in our case, because we knew X values, it'll be mu comma sigma. We'll figure out what the Z score thing is in another couple pages.